It is party time, Mom. Welcome to another episode of the Chad Prather Show, Studio 22, the mothership. We're flying into the nether regions of all things personal safety and uh, being aware of your surroundings. Because you know what? You bunch of wusses, y'all don't know how to take care of yourself. You have no clue about situational awareness. None whatsoever. We're going to fix that for you today. You'll see. The Puppet Master Mark, he's flying the ship. And of course, Candice, the queen of the Ethiopians, looking, looking, uh, reek and sleagal. That's our deal. Um, Lisa Page says that's the dyslexic version. Isn't that what you said to <laughs> you me? You did on... correct me the other day on, I think it was Twitter, Instagram. Yeah, because really you like, said Psst. we were looking sleek and regal, and I said, no, it's reek and sleagal. Dyslexic version. We have, we have uh, code words around this show. <laughs> stay horned. Isn't that right, Hot News, Natalie? Yep, that's mine. Yeah, stay horned. Hashtag stay horned. You know that thing, it really, when we started doing that, we started doing that when we were in the other studio. Yes. And, and, and the, the story there, for those of you who weren't watching the show back then, that's when uh, people said... Uh, we could tell that Natalie's horned for no, Chad. You, oh, not you liar. No, they, they said, didn't say horny. They said horned. No, no. She said, you two obviously have some sexual tension and you need to just bang already because you're, Horned. You're, you're horned. Yeah, that was it. And so we said, you got to stay horned. You know, That's we, the best advice I ever got. You got to keep the sexual tension alive. Otherwise, there's not the magic in the show. <laughs> Lisa, can you sense the sexual tension between me oh, and Natalie? Oh, it's so obvious. It, it, like you can cut it with a condom. Oh, yeah, that's right. You, you really 100%. can. 100%. Party foul Steve's like, what the hell? Uh, I can tell you're horned from over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not wearing underwear today. It's fantastic. Oh, oh man, I'm excited. Our good friend uh, Spencer Corson is here. Spencer, of course, you know Spencer from being on the, uh, well, Let's just say he held my hair while I puked in this trash can right here on uh, Stu's Power Hour. Uh, and the, the trash can has since been it, it's washed a, it's out. A, thank God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Spencer's new book comes out May 18th, The Safety Trap. We're going to spend some time talking about that. Uh, we're going to find out if you ever saw Glenn Beck naked when he was doing personal security detail for Glenn. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know how that works. Uh, Glenn probably made him sign a, that's a, in the NDA. an NDA. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's in the epilogue. <laughs> directions Lisa. to the bunker or directions to the bunker in the book. I cannot <laughs> confirm nor deny. So, so back before we did Power Hour, uh, I knew this was before I'd met Spencer. I uh, met him the day of Power Hour and... The, uh, I had been on Glenn's show that morning and Glenn said, I'm going to make money off of Spencer Corson if y'all would just get him drunk and make him talk and make him violate his non-disclosure from back when he did security for me. But Spencer's done, uh, he's done security for a lot of folks, whether it's politicians, uh, celebrities, people of note, uh, private citizens, uh, just tons of stuff. We're going to get into all that and going to get into this book as well, which I'm halfway through it, thoroughly enjoying it because this is, a, this, like, this is cool shit to me. Thank you. This is cool shit. And this is a great book. It's a well-written book. I, I sit there and after Power Hour, Spencer, I, I got so many messages of people going, girls, women, who is Spencer? Who is Spencer? He and had them like, all horned. He's taken, ladies. He belongs to me. <laughs> if you were watching Power Hour, he That's took right. my 210 I, pounds I and picked it up, right up. <laughs> put me right in his lap, rocked me like a baby. I've never been so in love. I, I've never felt so loved. And now we feel the sexual <laughs> tension with you two. Wow. Yes. Listen, it's Friday night somewhere, right? Somewhere. Yeah. I done put, been pushed aside. Yeah. That's, now we've had, this This room is fraught with sexual tension. <laughs> At all times. Stay horned. Did you know, I? this is, did you? Did, I, so, please tell me that is somewhere on the campaign hashtag. This letter. is, uh, this is, uh, 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 this this message is um, paid for by Chad Prather for effing governor. What's what's our phrase? Chad um, Ch uh, th this effing message. This effing message. This effing message, this effing you message you has been paid for by Chad Braith for Governor 2022. Yeah. Uh, and of course, Allison. Everybody knows Allison would step in and say this is not an official statement. <laughs> 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 because let me tell you something. Uh, we like I want to do different T-shirts. Like somebody came up with a great T-shirt idea. I mean, look, at the end of the day, I'm still a comedian, right? I still make jokes. I still ridicule things. I still mock things, and it's hard. I've had to kind of back off of some things because people are so damn sensitive, right, on this right. campaign yeah, deal. of course. But somebody gave me a great idea the other day. They said, uh, Chad Prather grabbing Austin by the... <laughs> and I was like, that is, just makes me laugh. Yeah, that's it good. Makes, that's makes good me one. laugh. But people, they would lose their minds. Now, you know, Kinky Friedman ran as an independent for governor back in 2006. He did. And uh, I want to do a shirt that said, Chad Prather, he's not kinky. 
right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because but that's was, punny. They won't let me do it. It's very punny. Yeah. What? Very but good. if you understand, see, Kinky was not, shall we say, serious, because his his campaign catchphrase was, How "Yeah, but hard you can do it, it with a capital K, and it it hits. It makes that sense. changes right. it. Yes. Yeah. Now Stu said he's sort of kinky. <laughs> oh, well, he's talking about. Yeah. How does Stu know about King? <laughs> what is he talking about? Yeah. But, but you know, I, I'm like, my point is, I'm serious. You know, Kinky's campaign slogan was, how hard can it be? <laughs> Which <laughs> didn't go over so well. <laughs> and they're giving you problems? I know. Uh, you can do that job sitting down. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, damn. You wow. really got to... You got to stop wow. with the handicapable jokes. Wow. See, because that's going to be attributed to me. Oh. It's coming. It's <laughs> that's coming. too late. Everything's going to be attributed you're guilty to by you. a proximity of about 15 feet. Though. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Everywhere I go, people go, why isn't every, every political event, why isn't Party Foul Steve? Why isn't he here? Have you also noticed that when all of those, those ladies were messaging chat about who I was that not one of them got forwarded to me. <laughs> he kept every true? single Wait, one I of those. I told you. He kept Listen, every single one of them for I himself. I pissed on that hydrant. <laughs> <laughs> every dog in town knows we belong, who you belong to, Spence. <laughs> hey, we're going to get into this book and I'm excited about it. But what if I told you? And this, this actually... We're, this actually matters right here, what I'm about to tell you. Brickhouse Nutrition. You can improve your health, boost your energy, and support a healthy heart in less than two minutes per day. Uh, Field of Greens, unlike any other superfood because it's real USDA organic fruits and vegetables packed with antioxidants. Field of Greens, it supports heart health, metabolism, blood pressure, digestion, plus it's pre and probiotic. Great for everybody in your family, old, young, your little athletes, everybody in the family. Make it part of your daily routine. You just take a scoop. Put it in a glass of water, drink it, and you are done. On with your day. Uh, they got 18 clinically researched essential fruits and vegetables, plus green tea, ginger, turmeric, and beets. Go to BrickHouseChad.com. Get 15% off your first order with the promo code CHAD. I spell it CHAD at checkout. BrickHouseChad.com. Easiest and fastest way to start living a healthier life. Available in original wild berry and now lemon lime. BrickHouseChad.com. Promo code CHAD. Be right back. The name of the book is The Safety Trap, and I like this uh, because we're all guilty of falling into the safety trap. Spencer, what is The Safety Trap? Safety Trap is a, a phrase I coined a few years ago when I was talking to my clients about the false sense of security that sometimes hides behind our own, accept, or our own belief, our own expectation that everything is okay when fear has abated, but risk remains. So if you're talking about, like a school shooting, for example, mm -hmm. something bad happens, there, everyone's outraged, there's the politicians are gonna do something, the community's gonna do something, you know, organizers, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, we're gonna do the other thing, and then everyone gets themselves all in a tizzy, and then nothing happens, and everything goes back to normal, and then we wait for it to happen again. It's this, this, this reluctance for us to participate in our own protection, and instead choose to, allow ourselves to swing from one end of the pendulum of hypervigilance mm. to the other end of complacency from uh, we're, you know, we're strip searching grandma before she goes into the ballpark to, you know, nothing's going to happen. I don't understand why we even have to be bothered with this. Right. Everyday safety requires the participation of everyone, a healthy sense of skepticism, a moderate dose of vigilance is all most of us need to succeed in staying safe. And those two things are a very small price to pay for the liberties and freedoms which flow so freely from peace. See, I'm one of them dudes that's like Jason Bourne who, when he didn't know who he was, you know, he was still suffering from amnesia, but he could figure out, he's sitting in the diner and he goes, I can tell you how many electric outlets are in the room mm -hmm. and I can tell you which truck has a gun rack and all that stuff. And he, like, I don't understand why I just naturally yeah. see these things. Like, I can understand that level of hypervigilance. Most people don't operate there. But, but most people don't operate at any level of situation. Like most people operate at a, everything's going to be fine. And if something breaks bad, someone's going to save me. Yeah. The problem is, in today's world, it's not wrong place, wrong time. It's any place, any time. Mm -hmm. And we can no longer afford to live in a world where we simply hope that nothing will happen and then solely rely on the first responders to save us once something does. Yeah. We have to participate in our own protection. We have to accept that our responsibility or that our safety is 
our own responsibility. And that safety trap is when you you think you're in a safe place, right? You think everything's okay. Like like the 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 necessary precautions have been taken, so I'm fine. Right. The safety trap, in its essence, is sometimes feeling safe is the most dangerous thing we do. Yeah. Because when we expect nothing to happen, we don't see the warning signs that something does. Uh, I, my global experience, I have done 300 protective missions to 163 countries over a 20-year career. And the one thing that has been proven time and time and time again is that the warning signs of danger are always identifiable before that bad thing happens. And staying safe is about teaching ourselves to see them. Yeah. See, see guys, Spencer is Kevin Costner. Mm -hmm. He really is. He is. But even better looking. And I will always... Bring it to him. Any sexual trysts with a uh, client? Uh, yes. Any, any Whitney, totally. Whitney Houston's out there? Yes. Um, I feel like this is like these are hard hitting journalistic <laughs> questions. This is what America wants to know. But isn't it interesting that like when we so if we're going to go with just participating in our own protection when yeah. we're driving our cars, right? We accept some level of risk. We if, if a key tenant of leadership is anticipating the needs of others, a key tenant of safety is anticipating the idiocy of others. We are looking for the person when we're driving who's like coming flying up from the back. We're looking for the person who's changing lanes, who's zigzagging. You know, you ever notice how people like walk how they drive? Where the people mm -hmm. who like kind of cut in and out of traffic yeah. are the same people who are going to be cutting in and out of the sidewalk. If we just take those very same principles on the road, but apply them to every, the aspects of our everyday life, like so much of us will live a safer existence. Yeah. Because even though this time in our lives is the safest time that's ever been, you know, been in the world, there is still a risk of, of real world harm. Yeah. And we need to do what, I mean, I'm a security expert. I do this for a living. And Monday night, I had some guy try to break into my house. Talk about picking the short straw. I mean, wrong <laughs> house, wrong house. wrong house. Wrong house. But, That's, you know, I have the cameras up. I mean, you have the five Ds of like home security, right? You have like deterrence, detect, deny, delay, defend. And I, if you look at my house, it looks like a fortress. You see the lights, you see the cameras, you see the gates, you see the, and then I've got the electronic locks. I've got everything you could possibly have to keep your home safe, including a well-trained service dog and mm -hmm. a Remington 870 tactical. There you go. But I go to bed at midnight, 1, 10 a.m. There's my dog goes from zero to hero. And it's not that like, hmm, I wonder if that sound is. It's like, dad, let me out the door to do what I do. Mm -hmm. I see the motion lights are on in my house. I look at my phone and I see the security notifications are pinging. I look at my watch and it says, motion, backyard, motion, backyard. I'm like, all right, let's go. Grab the gun, shoulder it up, let Ronan out the back door so that he can intercept the guys. He's coming through the back fence. I flank out the front to go out the front. As I pie out the door, guy's already off the property. I'm like, yeah. Ronan saved that bad guy's life. Yeah. Ronan saved, the dog saved the criminal's life. And if you follow Spencer on social media, Ron, like George, you know how I am with George, big ball George. Ronan is to Spencer <laughs> what my big ball of guinea pig is to me. Like all, right. like Spencer ha always, always filming his dog. All I love my dog. And you do not yeah. want to mess with Hands his dog. Hands down, my healthiest relationship. Yes. <laughs> you said dad. Dad, let me out. Dad, let me dad, out. Dad, he's like, yeah. dad, I want to play. Dad, he's let me get him. He's like the dog daddy. And he was so proud of himself, like, after well, yeah. after we did it. He's like, dad, I did good, right? Did good. Yeah. good. Dave, it was what he was bred for. Yeah. What yeah. he was trained yeah. for. Been yeah. living for this moment. I'm still trying to figure out, like, what actor would play my dog. <laughs> like, what, whose voice would that be? <laughs> what was that? What was that Disney movie that they did where the dog was like an action hero in yeah. the movies, but really hero. thought? Was it? No, yeah, a little white dog. A little white dog. Mm -hmm. It was voiced by John Travolta. Oh my god! And and I'm trying. Like that is my Bolt. 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 So that's my Dolly. That's my blue healer. Like yeah. she thinks she's an action he hero. Like she is there to her little thirty pound fat ass thinks that she's there to do some damage and and does hear her right. Is she's all action now, Willie? See, he's got a cool dog name like Ronan. Like you hear a dog named Ronan, that dog's gonna eat your face off. Willie is trained to eat your face off, but he's named Willie, right? Mm. He's named for Willie Nelson. <laughs> so, but he'll still eat your face off. I, I've got to rethink that. I got a Dolly and a Willie. But, I got to uh, so, rethink so this my my firm thing. does a lot of like uh, litigation support, and you're yeah. naming your dog Willie will actually help you if the dog ever does have to. Win. Ah, there you go. Because the, yeah. the another, an opposing counsel could be like, "You were training your, like, you even named it a, yeah. a, a samurai." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. 
Hey, T2000. You, you were waiting for someone to break into your house. <laughs> like T2000 Kevin, heal. Kevin's the way to go. It's just Kevin. <laughs> That's my dog, Bruce. <laughs> oh, Bruce. This, so so I, I made the illusion earlier when we were talking about Brickhouse Nutrition. I, like I can relate to every chapter in this book. I love it except the one on physical fitness, because because I can't. But physical fitness is so important. I know, but first of all, this guy has hands like a bunch of bananas. Like if he were to punch you in the face, you like he's gonna clobber your entire head. I'll tell you what. I remember being in middle school, and um, oh my gosh, the, the name just escaped me. Uh, Cunningham was mm -hmm. the quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. I grew up in Philly. Yeah, Randall Cunningham. Uh, yeah, Randall Cunningham. And he came to our school and I shook his hand and it was like shaking hands with a pizza. It wrapped <laughs> around <laughs> my entire, and I was like, wow. Yeah. And th that's why you can just go like this and throw yeah. the football like 90 Zip yards. It. Every time I shake hands with Spencer, I do it wrong. Like I don't know where I fit in there. Because <laughs> right. I have small hands. I don't know where I fit in all of that, that mass of flesh. Uh, <laughs> talking about, talking about, I, you posted a fun video the other day, and a lot of people posted it, where the guy's pumping gas. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the van pulls up, yeah, and yeah, obviously, yeah. these are bad actors here to do no good. And he just pulls the gas thing out and just I thought that was down. so brilliant. I, it really was. I said it to the Mission Impossible theme song, so it was like... I was... And it was so much fun. But talking yeah. about... I was in... Talking about... All of this stuff brings back a memory, and I, don't, I was um, with somebody the other day. I was, I was with a kid, and I said, can I teach you a lesson? Because the kid was wearing a hoodie. And I said, when I was in the ninth grade, I, there was a school bully who just would not leave people alone. And one day he came up to me, and he was wearing a hoodie, and the strings were right here. So I just grabbed the strings and pulled them real hard so it cinched up. And the only thing you could see was the tip of his nose. And I just beat the shit out of him. And he never could see it coming. I just wailed on him like that. And that's all the kid. I said, if you're ever in a situation like Natalie is right now and somebody's messing with you, they're wearing a hood. That's like these guys who come at you with all the earrings in their, for in their exactly. eyes and stuff. And I'm yeah. like, you ain't hard. You try to be hard. Yeah, you yeah, ain't yeah, hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the, the, we're going to rip that shit out. The reason I shared that video was because I think it was... So one of the key tenets I always talk about or that I always talk about in anytime I'm doing any kind of consulting or that I, I bring up in the book a lot is awareness plus preparation equals safety. Okay. If you are aware of the real world risks that you are most likely to face, then you can put in the safeguards to keep those risks from ever arising into a, a realistic concern. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately you can have a very safe existence. Had that person been like on the phone or, you know, froze or panicked or whatever, but she or he, was a he or, he or she? I think it was I a guy. It was a he. I think it was a guy. But s notices that this van is coming up and then uses the, the, you know, a very Krav Maga type thing is to use your environment to your advantage, right. takes the gas hose and immediately just starts spraying all the bad guys. One, you ever had gasoline in your eyes? Oh. Mm. Incredibly painful. Yeah. Two, you immediately neutralize any kind of handgun threat because no one's going to fire, gonna a, fire right. no one's going to yeah. fire a gun when they're covered in gasoline. Mm. Three, you remove their anonymity because now all the cops need to do is if they Smell pull a car over and they're like, this, these people reek of gasoline. Hey, yeah. that's probable cause. And all of those things are active particip you know, are active ways that that individual was able to participate in their own protection yeah. and ultimately saved their lives and taught a very valuable lesson in that 15 second clip that hmm. can women, men, school teachers, my mother has the capability to spray someone down with a with yeah. a, a gas pump because they are very they understand how to use that. So the cover endorsement is from our mutual friend and a, and a frequent guest on the show, uh, Clint Emerson, Navy SEAL, and just all around killer. Uh, One of the most dangerous men I know. I mean, it really, no shit. Like, like no shit. Yes. I, I whenever I introduce Clint or whatever his real name is, uh, I, I always say, <laughs> I always say, this is the dude that they dropped off on the beach in his underwear with a knife between his teeth. You could drop Clint off naked in the middle of the desert with his <laughs> blindfolded and bound and gagged, and he'd show up at your front door 48 hours later yeah. in a Maybach in a five-piece suit with $10,000 in cash. <laughs> <laughs> These are the kind of things, like, I want to... Like, I've hung with Clint here, obviously. We've, we've hung out on a, on a social level. We've hung out in Vegas. And I can remember asking Clint, I was, I was shopping for a knife. And I said, I know you're a fixed blade guy, not a full blade. And I said, should I do half face blades, which are great knives? Or should I do Amtec? He said, get Amtec. He Amtec said, is the best. He goes, because if I'm going to gut a human, that's what I'd want to go with. And I was like, well, I mean, that is, I was thinking letter opener. But <laughs> well, not just that, but like Amtecs are great. Bill Rapier, uh, a yep. former uh, special operations legend. Yeah. 
refines those things for violence. Mm -hmm. Like that is that is a tool to be used to kill. Well, they that is not a practice blade, which is how you know it's real, right? Because how, so much of like just even like carrying a gun, but like how are you going to unsheath it? How are you going to use it? How are you yeah. going to deploy it? Because you know, like you watch those old samurai movies where they actually strike as they draw. Yeah, that is how you should deploy a knife a in knife. a tactical setting. You don't go, hey, you know, that's not a knife. This is a knife. Yeah. Like no, if it gets to that point and your life is on the line, where moments matter most, yeah, violence of action will save your life. The thing I love about your book, and and back to Clint, he said the safety trap is a benchmark safety and security reference for everyone. Your book is for everyone. I mean, Clint, Clint's got stuff. You know, hundred deadly skills. Mm -hmm. He's got. Uh, the, all these different books that like, you know, the right kind of crazy. And, and he talks about some crazy shit, right? This is what everybody needs to be right. reading so and Clint, implementing Clint's in their life. Clint's book, like 100 Deadly Skills, if I always have someone who like comes up and goes, well, let's just say that like, you know, um, I'm handcuffed and blindfolded in the trunk of a car. What do I do? Right. For that, you want Clint's book. Right. For me, I'm like, how many decisions, like, how did you get in the back of that trunk? <laughs> right. Like, there's probably 15 steps before that right. where we could have, identified that something bad was about yeah. to happen and then maybe make some protective strategic decisions that will keep that reality from or keep that risk from ever you know escalating right. into reality hmm. yeah. my book is to prevent you from getting stuck in the exactly. trunk clint's book is to help you once you're there this uh hmm. there's some details i want to get into first uh here's something to help you uh protecting family uh safely that's got to be a number one priority and some people they're not they're just not comfortable with handguns firearms those kind of things Believe it or not, there's some people who are out there. Taser believes that safer self-defense is better self-defense. Taser has a line of non-lethal self-protection devices that are small and lightweight enough to carry with you or in your glove compartment or purse and powerful enough to incapacitate any attacker. Guns and pepper spray, they might be unnecessary risk depending on how you use them, and those around you could be at danger as well. Taser products, they're safer, easy to use. Electrical charge is sent out to immobilize attackers for up to 30 seconds, allowing you time to escape, and it sends emergency dispatch to your GPS location. Pretty, pretty fancy stuff. 237,000 lives have been saved with the Taser network of devices. And I want you to start protecting yourself today and your family with Taser. It's available without a permit in most U.S. states. And for a limited time, you can take advantage of Taser's best offer available. They'll save you $60 on a Pulse Plus bundle with a Taser Pulse Plus device cartridges and holster at Taser. That's T-A-S-E-R dot com. $60 saved right now. Use code C-H-A-D. I spell it, Chad. At taser.com, T A S E R.com. Be right back. <laughs> All right, safety trap. Now, you have, you have, um, you were Army Ranger, right? I was. They have uniforms big enough for you? They there were guys bigger than me. No shit. Yeah. The uh you you have worked with CEOs, heads of state, famous celebrities. Yes. Um, and you've got some practical stuff in here because you say this in the book, not everybody can afford or has the opportunity to have a security detail. Correct. Right? Nor do most people need one. Right. But what they do need is to audit themselves with honesty about the real world risks they're most likely to face. Yeah. Um, all of us, I mean, there's no such thing as no threat. There's mm -hmm. no such thing as zero risk. There's no such thing as perfect security. There's no such thing as perfectly safe. One of the things that I try to go over in the book is to get people to understand the difference between safety and security. Mm -hmm. Safety is an emotion, it's a feeling. Security is a state of being. Uh, easy way to, to think about this is, an umbrella. The canopy is security. That's mm -hmm. the safeguard that is in place to keep you from getting wet. Safety is the feeling underneath of being warm and dry. But when we expect that, and something like an umbrella works fantastic when it's uh, a light drizzle or an easy rain, but to expect that umbrella to work just as effectively or just to work just as effectively in a hurricane or in a tsunami would be an improper framing of that expectation. Yeah. And I think what a lot of people, whether that be the Capitol riots or a home invasion or 
uh, an, an active shooter or a terror concern is that they expect that one thing that they use when things are fine to be the same thing to, to work as effectively when things are not fine. Yeah. And that's just not the case. Yeah. That thing that works, that umbrella is, is what you really need to know is what is, if we're going to stick with that umbrella metaphor, is what is the weather forecast? Because maybe, a, you know, if it's calling for a tsunami, I need something more effective than this umbrella to help keep me warm and dry. You take just two days ago, they had a shooting in Times Square. Yeah. I mean, one of the most heavily uh, policed areas in New York City. Again, policing is not safety. Policing mm -hmm. is policing. Cops are reactive. Um, in fact, I would say most uh, security safeguards are something bad happens and then there is a response to help mitigate that threat. Mm -hmm. uh, we see this with, uh, you know, school shootings. We see this with terror concerns. We see, but there's absolutely almost, there's almost no constraints for violent prevention. Yeah. We don't, we don't do anything to address mental health in this country. We don't do anything to really help those who are hurting, which is why after every incident of violence, we always have those who come forward saying, oh, I knew that this person was, wasn't doing okay, or this person had just gone out and bought a gun, or there's a million, you know, red flag pre-incident indicators that are always identifiable on that pathway to violence. But that's which is why one of the chapters in the book is about the safety trap of shirking our responsibility. Mm -hmm. Because we, we all want to believe that safety is like a commodity. It's like a, it's like a guarantee. I pay my taxes so I should be safe. So that responsibility is someone else's mm -hmm. to deal with. Right. And it's not. It's ours. Yeah. And, um, you know, when Glenn and I were talking this morning, it, was, it wasn't really until like the Carter administration that this concept of first responders really started entering the lexicon of, of the American vocabulary, where the police and the firemen were the ones who were supposed to come and save you and, and by that threshold be the deterrence to keep that thing from happening. Prior to that, we as a country, as a community, as friends and as family, took an active role in our safety. We looked out for each other. When I was a kid, if I was getting, if I was doing something I wouldn't do, my friend's mom would come out and be like, hey, stop doing that, or I'm gonna tell your mother. That doesn't happen today. Yeah. We, we have no sense of community. We have no sense of, of collective identity. We have really, especially in this pandemic where we were all forced back inside into isolation, have just become more isolated, become more tribal, become more us versus them. And we're doing so in such a detriment to our culture. So they're saying now that, take New York City for example, there's an article, article that came out yesterday that uh, shootings in New York are up 93% over pre-COVID pandemic times, right? Mm -hmm. the, the statistics are through the roof. So they're up almost 100%. Um, and we talk about arguing that first responders take time to get to your situation. It's good to be armed, Second Amendment rights, th these things. It, you need to be able to defend yourself. But you alluded to something, and it plays into this, and I know it means a lot to you because I've heard you talk about it, but mental health. We're not, we're not dealing with that issue in this country. Not only are we not dealing it with this country, but we have a, one of the more regrettable side effects of this pandemic is that we were also isolated. Mm -hmm. And so we have seen a systemic rise in substance abuse, child abuse, domestic violence, um, mental illness, serious mental illness. And now that people are allowed out again, mm -hmm. it's kind of like that release valve on the powder keg. It's just, it's just going, to, it's going to spill over into exponential yeah, uh, we're, this is this is what we are seeing right now. We are now at more, I think last check we were at like 155 active like mass mm -hmm. casualty events, mm -hmm. and we're in May. We're gonna see that much more as mm -hmm. yeah. the weather gets hotter and people are 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 more free to roam mm -hmm. and because the problem with a society is that we we tend to only be able to focus on one thing at once, yeah. and so. And I see this with like my business clients. They're like, oh, well, I'm worried about physical security. Oh, well, now I'm worried about cybersecurity. Well, now there's, now there, but you know, now we were so focused on cybersecurity that we got broken into, or, you know, so it's, there's this, everyone keeps, and you just taking a holistic view at everything and giving, instead of giving all the resources to one thing, giving mm -hmm. 
all the resources, the uh, appropriate amount of attention that they all need yeah. is, is the best way to do it. The problem with that is that it doesn't sound good on Twitter and it doesn't sound mm, good on good sound point. bites and it doesn't sound, it, that doesn't lead the evening news. It, yeah. If it bleeds, it leads works for a reason because right. outrage trend, the outrage of algorithm or the algorithm of outrage yeah. far surpasses the algorithm of happiness and peace. Yeah. And when you think you're safe, you're right. There was another shooting, I think, Colorado yesterday mm -hmm. where like six people were killed. At Colorado. A a, yeah. I mean, you're not, you're not safe anywhere. No, but again, that was intimate partner violence. The guy right. went there to kill his ex-girlfriend. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, they were, you know, probably they got, they were forced to cohabitate and get along while mm -hmm. they were in isolation together. She can't stand his ass now that the now she's allowed to leave. So she goes out and starts living her life again. He doesn't understand why he lost that semblance of control. And any time you see this time and time again in domestic violence relationships, the most violent time in that relationship is when the female wants to leave because that's when the male has to exert more violence to reassert his control. Reassert the, the control. And you bring up an interesting point in, in the book. We're living in a day and like, first of all, we live longer. Ever since the Industrial Revolution, mm -hmm. we uh, before that we were prey to predators. I mean, it was as you and to use your phrase, yeah. humanity was a bloodbath. It was. We w you you went to bed every morning hoping that someone with sharper claws and teeth didn't <laughs> choose you for dinner. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it, we're we're living in a day and age, but see, man's inhumanity to man. We're harming one another, and we're using the weapons and the tools to do that. And when you add the mental health issue in there, it is a powder keg that's going on. And we're living in a day and age like with the pandemic thing. Yeah. Wait, anytime bad. there's no outside Porn. threat, you will, you, you will look for. We as a species need conflict. Right. Because conflict is progress. You have to have some kind of a challenge to overcome so that the next thing can take place. Yeah. And I don't mean to say that like, like, listen, bad things have to happen so that good things can grow. I mean, fire, like... There, you know, there are control yep. burns in forests so that the acorns can, you know, gestate and grow into oaks. Mm -hmm. But as a community, we, you know, for, for the longest time, we used to look out for one another. And now we just don't mm -hmm. do that anymore. Well, I can tell you this, uh, U.S. Law Shield, they'll look out for you. Millions of law-abiding gun owners out there. A lot of them don't realize how fast a self-defense situation can change their life forever. Spencer almost had that happen the other night. Uh, you're just going about your day, running errands, picking up the kids, getting gas, attending church. Split second, normal day turns into the worst day of your life. And you know, self-defense, an incident like that can take only seconds. But the problem is the legal fallout can last for years. So you got to get U.S. Law Shield. They will protect law-abiding gun owners for just $10.95 a month. You get immediate 24-7, 365 access to attorney-answered emergency hotlines that won't and you won't pay a penny in attorney's fees if you have to use them. Members have direct access to attorneys for state-specific guidelines on firearm and self-defense law and U.S. Law Shield. They're not a law firm. They're underwritten by third-party insurers in many states. State law and insurance regulations apply. you got to see the website for the applicable underwriting company in terms of coverage. But I want you to call 833-8-GUN-LAW. That's 833-8-GUN-LAW. Or visit uslawshield.com slash chad. Get a special radio offer. You will feel better knowing you have U.S. Law Shield on your side. 833-8-GUN-LAW or uslawshield.com slash chad. Be right back. Yeah. Hey, I w can I say something? Yeah. Okay. So, but 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 after you okay. do that, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pretend that he is my security detail, and Party Foul Steve's <laughs> gonna attack me, and we're gonna oh, see what happens. That, that's way better than what yeah. I was gonna ask. Forget yeah. it. That that wins. You're we're gonna we're right. gonna crawl my guy his ass. <laughs> no, that's good. All right. We'll see. Uh, no, uh, uh, no, please. You Natalie. you were talking about how we're gonna see a rise in that, which is gonna be natural, but a lot of that pinup frustration that people had when they we were in lockdown along with that mental health if you talk to law enforcement they will tell you the amount of violence in the homes that that increased was so sub substantial it happened to one of our dear friends mm -hmm. that was fighting um something internally and it happened during not only did we have covid and you're locked down but then we had a massive storm here in texas that can that continued to lock us down and 
I just happened to talk to some police officers and they said there it was nonstop them having to go to these domestic violence calls at homes. Yeah, especially during that storm where you had people who were running out of food, who were freezing cold. So you had all those you had a a volatile situation already at home. Mm -hmm. And then that storm just exacerbated exacerbated that yes like tenfold you had so many additional stressors and it speaks to the mental health that that's where we we have to get in there and help these people that are that are we, we do and i think trapped um pete townsend no pete there's a great book called um complex ptsd from surviving to thriving mm-hmm. <clears throat> and in this book he talks about everyone knows fight or flight but there's also freeze and fawn. And everyone, very few people are familiar with freeze and fawn. And one of the things that we always, or I do a lot of consulting with uh, domestic violence advocacy groups for the survivors, not for the abusers. And one of the things we see is that people will have in their head, oh, if that ever happened to me, I would fight back. Or if that ever happened to me, I would run away. And what we see happen time and time again is that it is so unexpected that they freeze And then they try to people please or they try and i talk about this in the book about being more disagreeable or or the safety trap of being too polite we sometimes when we are in those high stress life-threatening situations want to do everything we can to keep that thing from ever happening again instead of putting as much time and distance between the threat as possible because if it has happened before it could happen again Mm -hmm. And so it can be very easy to say, oh, I'm sorry that I made you do that, or I'm sorry that I made this happen, or I'm sorry I'll be a better girlfriend or a better wife or a better partner or better lover, a better friend, whatever it is. But the reality is, is that once, it's kind of like if the dog bites you once, you have to put the dog down. Mm -hmm. If someone abuses you in an interpersonal relationship, that relationship is over. Mm -hmm. It is not worth being safe because while people may say violent things and they may choose words that alarm over actions that harm because they understand that line of righteousness once that line is crossed it is your responsibility to take ownership for your own safety and leave yeah and that's if you look through the book like you've got you've got great chapter headings in here because they you deal with like in the fourth part of the book you have a personal threat assessment checklist of home school work in life yes. and then you've got you know various aspects that we're all guilty of like you mentioned the being too polite and you've got the you've got the protective takeaway you said in one part you said your willingness to defend yourself should always be stronger than your unwillingness to offend another yeah a yes to to someone else should never come at the cost of a no to you yeah have we all seen the movie bombshell Yes. Okay. Yes. There is a great scene in that movie about what it means to be disagreeable. When when the John Lithgow character uh, who's um, playing Roger Ailes goes after the uh, the uh, Megyn Kelly character, Megyn Kelly clearly defines this as a no, I don't want anything to do with you, and, and exer- exits herself from the situation. Contrast that to the Margot Robbie character who wants very much to be on television and goes in and Roger L says, uh, well, you know, this is a visual medium. Why don't you uh, stand up and give me a twirl? Mm -hmm. But instead of the Margot Robbie character, you know, taking ownership of her own power and saying, absolutely, Mr. Ailes, let's set up a screen test and I'll, and I'll show you all the angles, you know, on camera. She does. She's, it's a no to her, but she's still going to give a yes to him. Mm -hmm. And what predators like him are looking for is how disagreeable are you willing to be? Are you the kind of person who's going to step up for yourself? Or are you going to be the person who's going to kind of give me a little more power than you should? Because what does he do next? Okay, hike up your dress a little bit. Now, she already knows that the first thing was inappropriate, but how far is she going to let this go? And then the dress goes higher. He wants it higher. He wants it higher. He wants it higher. Until finally he sees that she's at her breaking point, and he knows that's enough for that day because he's got a long-term plan to exploit her unwillingness to be disagreeable down the line. But if all of us can just understand that our unwillingness to offend another should always or should never come at the, un- or <clears throat> at the willingness to defend our own selves, we can, we can cut so many of those, you know, those would-be offenders off at the knees from the get-go because predators do not 
target the strongest among us. They target the weakest, like a lion stalking the gazelle. They don't go after the strongest of the herd. They go after the one who's weak, who's at the back, who, is not, who does not have a strong stride, who is, is lost, who is wilting, who is injured. We need to do whatever we can to promote our own protective posture. He goes into such detail in the book with, with the checklist and the things. I mean, all the way to overprotecting your children. Uh, these are fascinating topics because we're all guilty. We're all guilty of these things. And uh, you do a heck of a job. There's a lot of stories in here. There's nothing in here about Beck being naked and running down the street oh. on some. I just. Gosh. Darn. It I know. Oh. That's not a visual any of us Nobody want. wants to see that. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that. At all due all. respect, sir. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> Coming for you, Beck. Um, but folks have got to get this book, man. The Safety Trap, Spencer Corson, Corson Security Group, nationally recognized threat management firm. Hey, you might want to hire him to kick somebody's ass. I mean, whatever, whatever, mm -hmm. Steve, we've had to work with security. I mean, obviously being a public figure and we, we've had to hire security details and things like that. But you were talking about working with Glenn and how many threats come his way. I mean, tons. Yeah. it's I insane. Mean, I mean, obviously, that was a very polarizing time in America and uh, Fox News, especially at that time, mm -hmm. was very polarizing and um, not just uh, Mr. Beck, but everyone sure. associated with, with Fox News at that time was both capitalizing and the victim of controversy. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a crazy world we're living in. Only getting crazier, guys. You've got to protect yourself. You've got to get the safety trap. Spencer's uh, written a great book here. And you've got great personal examples. You've got great um, stories and, and illustrations of real life things Thank you. in there. So I, what I wanted to do was, like, here's 15 ways that people get themselves into trouble. Yeah. Here's what happened. Here's how it was allowed to happen. Here's five things that you can employ to keep that bad thing from happening yeah. to you. The way I describe the book is if you'll read this, you won't ever have to read Clint Emerson. Emerson. You won't have to read Clint's <laughs> books. Because you don't get there. You won't ever have to get to where Clint Emerson is. <laughs> Clint's book does have really cool cartoons. He's got really cool pictures in it. Like, you, know, you, know, my, you, should, you should buy both. Buy both. Buy, buy, both, you do buy my book and exactly. Clint's book. Exactly. You will be a well-trained, well-oiled, well-prepared machine. Hang tight. We will be right back. The book comes out May 18th, so you got a few days. You can pre-order it right now where books are offered. Go to Amazon, Books a Million, uh, all those things. That you go. Independent booksellers. Our buddy Jack Carr always says, go to those independent small booksellers and buy it there. But uh, let's get this sucker on the uh, New York Times bestseller list. That's where it needs to be, seriously. Uh, this is important stuff. This is where, this is where we all live. And uh, Spencer's done a hell of a job in, in this book, and it's great. And it's gonna be, you're going to love reading it and implementing the uh, practical principles that are a part of it. Because not only is it physical safety, it's psychological safety and, and getting your brain in the right spot. Can I borrow that one? Nope, this is, oh, this is mine. I have one for you. Oh, thanks. This is mine. Not that we shouldn't I buy it I bet Spencer knows If only you, know. you knew the author. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I bet Spencer knows exactly <laughs> If there was a way to get you a copy. <laughs> if you know him, ask, tell him. Yeah, no, I, I will. You need to follow him on Instagram as well, at s.corson on Instagram. And uh, good stuff. Always some good tips and tricks that are there. And I love I love watching guys like yourself and um, uh, Clint and, and just different ones that you just you just learn things from. I appreciate that, man. Thank yeah, you. Man. you. It's good stuff. And uh, and if you if you find yourself in the middle of a shit show, you might need to call him to come clean up that mess. <laughs> we help good people make bad things better. <laughs> I love that. I know some people. I know some people. <laughs> hey, before we get out of here, I want to remind you uh, uh, to go to watchchad.com. That's where all the fun stuff is. We're going to be in Beaumont, Texas. Got a big show coming up down there Saturday night. Get your tickets. Come hang out with us. Shows across the country, all kind of stuff going on. Come hang out with us and uh, help support us. My book, Am I Crazy, comes out September 7th. Make sure you're pre-ordering that sucker as well. We're going to talk to you tomorrow night. We love you. God bless you. Thanks, Spencer. Talk to you then. Thank you, sir. Bye. <laughs>